Hi friends, my name is Doris, and I'm going to talk to you today about being brave. Being brave sometimes is very hard for many people, but when you listen to this story, and you'll see it when he is brave, this little boy, but when you listen to this story, you're going to see that he was very brave. Being brave is, mean, is something that you can jump in and help out. You can share. Being brave is to protect somebody. Being brave is to speak up for somebody. So I'm going to start out with a book and it's called Those Shoes. It's by Mary Beth Boltus and it's illustrated by Noah Jones. So the story starts out with I have dreams about those shoes. They're black high tops with two white stripes. Grandma, I want them. Grandma says, there's no room for want around here. It's just me, Grandma says. And what you need are two boots for winter. Brandy comes to school in those shoes. He says he's a fast runner, but I can't keep up with those shoes. Nate comes to school in those shoes. I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom. Seven times in one day. Just so he can walk up and down showing off those shoes. Next, Alan, Jacob, and Parents, they all get those shoes. Then one day, I was out playing kickball, and one of my shoes comes apart. The guidance call it. The guidance counselor, Mr. Alfrey, he says, I can help you. He brings out a box of shoes and all kinds of stuff that other kids need. He helps me find shoes, but there was only one size shoe in the box that would fit me and they were Velcro like the ones my little cousin Marshall wore. They had an animal from a cartoon. I don't think kids even know this cartoon. When I come back to the classroom, Alan, Jacob, all look at the shoes that Mr. Alfrey had given me. The only kid that wasn't laughing at me was Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, oh, Mr. Alfrey was very kind. I'm so happy that he could help you out. I was writing my spelling words that night, and one of the words was shoes. And I looked down at my Velcro shoes. On Saturday, Grandma said, well, let's check out those shoes that you want so much. I've got a little money that I put aside. Maybe, maybe, you never know, we could buy them. At the shoe store, Grandma and I find those shoes. But when she turns them over, they were 
$35. Grandma shakes her head. She says, no, we can't get these. These are a want, not a need. Well, then I had a great idea. Maybe we could go to the thrift stores. Maybe, maybe we could find those shoes there. We went to one thrift store. No luck. We went to another thrift store. No luck. Finally, we came to the last thrift store. And there in the window was those shoes. I was so excited. We went in right away. And we tried them on. These shoes were only $2.50. Oh, my heart was just pounding. I took off the Velcro shoes with a little cartoon on them. And I put on those shoes. I did get them on, but I had to curl up my toe to make them fit. Well, Grandma looked and she shook her head. I said, I had the money. I could buy them for $2.50. Oh, I, I was so happy to get rid of those Velcro shoes. At home a few days later, Grandma puts out a new pair of boots for me. They were the black boots. I don't say a word about them. I told her, I think my shoes will stretch. those shoes. I put them on and I wear them to school. Now I'm like everybody else. I looked though at poor Antonio as he was up at the board and I looked at his shoes. Antonio had black shoes but they weren't like mine. They weren't those shoes. His shoes had duct tape wrapped around the toe, and he had duct tape wrapped about, around the back. I could see that his feet were smaller than mine. After school, I head to the park to think. Antonio was there, the only kid who never laughed at me when I had to wear my Velcro shoes. He shoots a basket, a loose piece of tape on, Antonio, on Antonio's shoe smacks to the concrete every time he tried to jump. I think, I just think I'm not gonna do it. We left off the swings. His shoe smacked again and I think to myself, I'm not going to do it. We race one end of the playground to the other. I'm not going to do it. Do what, Antonio says. Here's the shoes of Antonio's. Antonio says, what are you talking about? Grandma called me for supper and she invites Antonio over too. After supper, he spies my shoes. Hey, how come you don't wear those to school? I shrug, my hands are sweaty. I can feel that he was wishing he could have these shoes. That night, I laid awake for a long time thinking about Antonio. When morning comes, I tried on these shoes one last time. They were too small. Before I changed my mind, 
The shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall and I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door, push the doorbell, and then I run. At school the next day, Antonio was smiling a big smile with his brand new shoes. I felt happy when I look at his face. I felt mad when I look at these shoes that Mr. Alfred gave me. But I also know I was brave and I gave Antonio my two small shoes. Later on when it's time for recess, there's snow all over. Leave your shoes in the hallway, the teacher says. It's time for you to put on your boots. I go to my backpack and I pull out my brand new black boots. No kid has ever worn them before and no kid at school has new black boots like I did. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward. And he says, thanks. Thanks for the new shoes. I smile and I give him a nudge. Let's race. That was a really good story. You know, that little boy, he was brave. He did give away his shoes to Antonio. He knew Antonio's shoes were in terrible shape. They had Velcro around them and they just weren't working for him. These were too small for the boy, but Antonio fit into them perfect. So the little boy was very brave. He gave a lot of happiness. Did you like that story? I sure did. It's one that I think it's fun to read again and again because sometimes for someone else, getting a new pair of shoes, even if they've been worn before, is, is fun to have. We've all had something like that. Like I know when I was growing up, I would get hand-me-downs from my cousin and when I put them on, they were just like brand new clothes for me. Well, today, today we are going to do another little project. And this one is, maybe we're going to send another letter to someone who just needs a hug. And I think you know right now, that isn't what really what we should be doing. We shouldn't be giving away hugs right now but I have a cool hug that you can give away to somebody to brighten up their day. So this one is, you're going to need two hands. And I'll show you the hands that I have right here. I have a copy of plain colored hands, and then I have a copy of hands with fingernails. And this one is a little easier to cut, maybe than this one. And I know you could trace your own, and that could work too. So if you don't use this, maybe you're just going to trace your own. If I was maybe grandma or grandpa, I'd love to have the, your own hands that you trace. But you know what? This will work, and it fits in an envelope. So I'm going to show you. You are going to need to cut out this hand, and you'll have two separate hands. And then you'll need a strip of paper that's about this wide. It can fit in an envelope. And I have a long envelope. You glue one hand on one side and one hand on the other side. So when you open it up, or when you do it, it looks like this. Now you're going to Fold the hands over 
and there's a hug. It's a giving somebody a hug, and here's what the inside says. You are brave. That was one of the words that I wrote up that we could put on the inside of giving somebody a distance hug. I know I'd love to get a letter like this. You put it in your envelope and you can mail it or you can just walk over and give it to somebody. Some of the words that I have are, thank you for everything you do. And you just cut that out and you can put it on your strip of paper. I miss you. That might be a perfect one to give if you have cousins or grandma and grandpa that you haven't seen. Another one is, I love you. Those are nice too. So you can put and make your hug for someone that needs a hug. Then I was thinking a little bit more about some of the things that we could do to maybe thank somebody who's been very brave. You know, I talked to you earlier about my mailman. I also have some people that have delivered things to my house. Like, oh, I've had um, the drugstore has delivered things to my house or I've had a delivery person. In fact, I had a delivery person today bring me some material. And I've been waiting for this material. And so they came right to my house. And I don't usually go and shake hands with them. Not now, but I wanted to thank them. So I had my grandkids you some chalk. And they made a big thank you right out on my sidewalk. And I wrote the words thank you. So I used, I have some chalk at home. And I made this, had my grandkids make these beautiful designs. Now this isn't my grandkids, but I did make some that you could look at, but you could make anything. You could make birds, you could make animals, you could even make a picture of yourself thanking somebody for something that they've done and you can put it in chalk. The nice thing about chalk is that when you get done with it, it washes away when it rains. So you can start another project. Well, that's my lesson for today. And this one was all about being brave and how to appreciate somebody who is brave and has done something for us. So why don't we end up with a prayer? So you would say, Dear Jesus, thank you for helping me to be brave. Being brave is to share. Being brave is to protect. And being brave is to speak up for others. Thank you for watching over all of us today and helping us to be brave.